uh, we'll get going. First, let's go check out what's inside here. Okay, so here's our shower prepped out. Devin got this all ready for us. This is stucco netting on the walls here on top of aqua bar paper. We screwed off the path, we call it chicken wire. Uh, most people just call it wire around here, but it's not technically chicken wire. So don't go down to your hardware store and ask for chicken wire to put up on your wall because you'll have a complete mess on your hands. It's bound really tight and you can't flatten it out. So this is 20 gauge stucco netting if, you, if you're looking to use it. Some people use diamond lath, um, which comes in the two foot by eight foot lengths. Uh, but this is, this is what we use here. And we, we screw off the studs, uh, put some anchors to anchor the, the wire into the studs. We don't always do that, but I think we're supposed to. I don't think you really need to, but we're doing it. Um, I did this, these stucco edges on the, the corners, on my outside corners, that's gonna help keep the mud in. And I also leveled and plumbed them, so it's gonna give us a screed point off of here. And we're all ready to go. We're ready to mix up mud. <coughs> you ready? Yep. All right, hey, thanks for checking out another one of my videos. I'm Isaac Ostrom. Today I'm super stoked to be showing this video. It's something I've wanted to do for a while. Uh, my very first YouTube video was on floating a wall and a lot of you guys have seen that. I made that back in 2010. So a lot of you guys know me from that video. But since then I wanted to, uh, I guess, make a better production of it, a little more teaching involved. So uh, we're gonna start out. This is a couple of our tools to mix the mortar. So we have uh, our mud box. We got a hoe, we got straight edges, which you're gonna see as I float, set of straight edges. And we got our bag mud here. So this is, this is the mud we use. Fat mud is what we call it here in California. I don't know what you guys call it the rest of the country, but we just know it as fat mud. It's a, it's a five to one to one. So five parts sand, like a stucco sand, one part lime and one part cement. So you can mix your own. We used to have to do that back in the day, but this co company, Dynacrete, is in Oroville here in Northern California. They distribute around the West Coast, at least up and down California. It's the best mud that I've, I've found in a bag. It's gonna mix this up. Uh, our shower is gonna take probably about, I'd say 12 bags is probably about what it's gonna take. I brought 15 just in case the wall is super out of plumb. And uh, we're going to mix it up. We got our water all ready to go. So, So we got a formula here where we do 10 bags and we do two almost full five gallon buckets and it gives us the right amount of water. That way it's, it's a lot simpler to do try, and then trying to guess and adding water and, and adding more mud. So nice thing about bag mud is you know exactly how much water to put in. So uh, first thing I want to do is show you the, 
why we float, okay? If, if we were just to follow this wall here, you can see, uh, Devin, can you get a picture of the bubble on there? If you can see that bubble, you see how out of level this wall is. So these are two brand new trowels I just bought. These are Marshalltown 13 by five inch trowels. Beautiful trowels, I love them. Made in the USA. So first thing I like to do is get, get put up on the wall. I'm just getting mud up on the wall. It's not doesn't need to be perfect because I'm going to put my float strips right here. I'm going to make sure I get plenty of mud on here. Devin, can you grab me a couple more buckets? All right, so we call this a mud stand. It's a nice place to put, put your mud on so you're not bending down out of a bucket each time. You saw me dump them on the ground and I do that just for my first couple buckets to get up here. Once I get up there, I'll start working off of the, off of the table. You can use two trowels. I actually learned with using two trowels. I usually use a hawk. And so you can load up a little more mud with a hawk. You get, get your mud on your hawk. But if you're a beginner and you're just trying it, I would do it with two trowels. to get one of the first things I like to do is get these set so that they can set up and then when I go to screed off of them I want these set up again I'm not getting it perfect I'm just getting my mud where I think it needs to be. You know, my, my mentor, Bob Moody, who worked in uh, San Francisco where a lot of these methods came from in the Union in the 80s and 90s, he always used to say, just get the mud up on the wall. You know, the thing about floating is, number one, get the mud up on the wall. Don't worry about getting it perfect the first time. Let's get it up. Get the mud from the table to the wall. Oops. This is probably better for left handed. And if you, Devin, if you can't get a good angle, well, looks like you got one there.
See what the hawk allows you to do. See, I'm not going back to my table every time. I'm basically getting this as a base layer so I can set my strips and then do this to the other wall, then the other wall. And then when I come back, putting one more coat of mud on there and screeding it off. So your mud mix can make all the difference. Like this Dynacrete, I know it's going to be sticky and just like the perfect consistency. If you're fighting your mud, it just sucks. And you, know, you get your mud up and it wants to fall down. So, you know, this isn't rocket science, but it does take a lot of practice. And I always, you know, if you're doing a project on your own house, that's like the perfect time to, to try. Because if, you know, this mud, it's only five bucks a bag. So even if you do a whole wall, and it doesn't work, it keeps falling down, you know, you can ditch that mud and you're only out like 20, 30 bucks. So don't be scared to try. You can, you can always do it and redo it. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And for the guys that are, who are just starting, you're just going to be slow. Just figure on, you know, I'm going to have a whole day or maybe I'm just going to float this one wall today. And then tomorrow I'll float this wall and then see if I can float the other wall at the same time. But you know, just keep your expectations low. Okay, so next thing we do, now that I got a, a thin coat up on the wall, again, I think it's probably between like a quarter and a half inch. Enough mud that when I put my float strip, so this is quarter inch redwood. We usually make our own. I know you can get them at Home Depot too in the lattice section. So, um, but they're redwood. Make sure they're redwood if you try pine or any other woods. What pine does is it absorbs a lot of water so it'll bow and they'll get crooked. Redwood will take on the water and it'll stay flat. And it's just, it has less knots in it and it's just a really good wood to use for float strips. So I'm gonna put my float strip up. The other thing you need to do is make sure that the edge you're using, which should be this guy, I think yeah that you're not going to go past you know this is going to go all the way to the wall on this side and if my float strip was past the edge that wouldn't be good because I wouldn't have a screed point there so you got to make sure your float strips are going to stay within the length of your edge as far to the as far to the side as you can get them ideally um, We've taken these edges and we end up cutting them down. So I got all kinds of different odds and ends sizes, but a stock size is four and a half um, because we do a lot of five foot showers. So I'm gonna put a float strip in and then I'm gonna plumb it up. So let's see, I wonder how you can see this, Devin. You might need to get in behind me here. So I'm gonna put my level on and I'm going for flat and plumb. So I know that it looks like I'm pretty good there, but I need to beat, beat it in a little bit. So I'm gonna beat in the top. And now I can beat in the bottom a little bit. Oh, there we go. So we're just about right right there. You wanna make sure you have mud fully behind your strip. Uh, so I, I have kind of a thin spot right here, which I don't really like. So I'm going to pack, I'm going to take my margin trowel. I'm going to pack mud in there. Pack mud in behind it so it doesn't, so it doesn't push in when I screed off of it. And ideally, I mean, that was kind of a hiccup. That's something I don't want to do. Normally I want to make sure I have enough mud behind my strip. I want it to be solid behind there.
this just gives when you when you pack the mud up against the side of the float strip you know i'm kind of doing it a 45 degree angle it gives that float strip some support as it cures a little bit it's not going to want to move because basically i'm going to do all of these strips all around the room before i come back and screed off of this This is one part of the job I wish is a little bit taller, but it's good. So I'll put my level back on there. How are we looking, Devin? Pretty dang plum. About as plum as you can get. All right, so that one strip is I set. I got this one strip set. I'm gonna set this other strip and then I'm going to go around and start on the other walls, but I'm not going to come back to this wall after I got the strips in on all my walls. That way, that way these guys are set up. So this is going to set up like it is now, and I'm going to come back and put more mud on. Okay, so here I'm going to put my second float strip up. And it also, it also helps to read the wall before you do this. So I kind of knew that with this wall here where I'm going to need more mud. So put your levels on the wall before you do it. And you'll know, like, I know I needed to put a little more mud down at the bottom than I needed up at the top. So that's, that's definitely good to know before you even put your float strips up. More mud, Devin. So I'm floating the curb before we go to lunch. I like, to, I like for it to set up a little bit so I can cut it in real nice. But basically I plop mud up on the top like this and then I just marry them up. And I'll put, that, I'll put that card up right here so you can see it. If you do want to see a detailed video on how I float a curb, you can, you can watch that video. But don't watch it until you watch this one. Make sure you watch this one all the way through and then go check, check out my other videos. I'll probably make a playlist of all my mud videos so you can see them. But yeah, I just kind of marry the, the sides and the top. 
and again not not making it perfect just getting the mud up and then that way once it sets up a little bit i can really shape it and do whatever i need to do with it Oops. and see when you get the top it'll hold it up like that So that's way more mud than I need, but I'm just going to shave it off afterwards. So take my little, little strips. Oh, Devin, can you grab me my tape measure right there? The only downside to doing it this way is that you can kick your strips around like while I'm doing the rest of the mud. I know I will, but I just put them right back in. It's not a big deal. So, go uh, 16 inch level, please. Thank you. So, I'm going to get that plumb. And I, I want to make sure that my curb is the same width all the way across. Not only that, I want it to be square with my back wall. So I'll, I'll double check here. And I'm 32. Check here. And I'm 32. So I'm square. And then five and three quarters. Five and five eighths. So this probably needs to come in a little bit and it's just out of plumb so that'll be easy. So let it sit there. So I need some more on the bottom on this one. So you can see I got the sticks plumb. Check again. Five and three quarters. Five and three quarters. You want to get a close up of that, Deb? Five and three quarters there. Come over here. And five and three quarters there. So, okay. So, yeah, so uh, we got it to a place where I wanted to even just sit up a little bit. Because again, it's going to firm up. Like I could screed off of this right now, but we're just going to grab a quick bite to eat, uh, catch our breath a little bit, relax, come on back in and finish the float off. Okay, so we just got done with lunch and coming back in, our float strips are firmed up nicely. Our wall mud starting to get a little glaze on it and I'm ready to put our other coat of mud on here. So I'm just loosening up uh, our mud getting ready to go. So now I'm just putting, uh, basically doing the same thing. Just putting a coat on. Just a little more mud at a time. Get another uh, bucket up here, Devin.
Yeah, so using my, my redwood float strips as a guide, I'm just putting more mud than I think it needs because I'm going to screed it off. Okay, Devin, what edge, what edge do I want? Longest one. Yeah, the four and a half footer. This edge here, just getting it a little bit wet. Now I'm going to start screeding off on my float strips here. It's just going back and forth. I'm not putting very much pressure on the wall. I'm not really pushing in on it. I'm just using these strips as a guide. Get a little mud off. Take the extra off. Go a little more. And I like to have the opposite wall float strips close enough so my edge is gonna bump into it. It's gonna make it a lot easier when I, I square everything off. It's gonna make me a nice, tight inside corner. And you'll tell when you got a got too much mud on your edge. And you just peel it off. <coughs> yeah, everything with mud is a side-to-side -side motion. You never you can drag it after you get almost all the mud off, but when you're cutting your mud, you you want to go side to side. Now that I got that, you can see I got, I got some low spots that I need to fill in, so I'll go ahead and take care of those before I go up any higher. And for me, I like to do it in two, two layers because it just makes it seem like the mud, when I do two thin layers, the mud wants to stay put. If this was one thick layer, which some guys do, they'll do all their mud at once. The mud just doesn't want to hold like it does when you got two thin coats. And the Southern California guys, they do a scratch coat. They do a scratch first and then they come back the next day and do this coat. And that really bites. I mean, when you put mud on a, on a scratch coat, you can hear it sucking the water out of it and it really sticks to it. But that's a whole different method. Maybe I'll try it someday, but uh, probably not. I'll let one of those guys show us how to do it. To me, it seems redundant to have two days of floating walls, but I, there, there might be some benefits to it that I don't know about. Um, they could probably explain better. But again, San Francisco Bay Area Tile Setter Union, this is the way they've always done it since the 70s and 80s. And uh, that's why we do it. Okay, so I got that part up, and now I'll do another. Another screen here. Still have a little more to do right there. It's kind of surprising this wall took a lot of mud.
That looks lovely. Okay, that's good, Devin. So yeah, just working my way up the wall here. Back and forth, easy does it. Don't get too much mud on your edge. And then plop it in the bucket. Need a step stool, he can stand at the bottom and float, but us short guys, Need a little help. Five eight has its advantages when you're working on a floor, but not in a shower. Well, it'd be okay if it. Was a... Yeah, they used to tile left to right here. You never had to go any higher. So this wall was really out of plumb. It was probably half inch to three quarters um, slanting this way. So we had to really build out the bottom to keep everything plumb and square. So take a lot of mud. So sometimes you can like on this wall over here, I'm going to be able to screed right off this strip because the wall is really close to plumb and straight. This wall is so bad, but I still like to have the strip in there because it just holds the mud in and gives you a nice clean edge, even if you're out proud of it, it's still going to give you a nice edge. So yeah, the second layer going up. These two walls will go a lot faster because they don't have the niche in the window. It's amazing how much more time, well, you guys know if you set and tiled, it takes a lot of detail to do the windows and the niches.
All right, so our three walls are up. Next thing we're gonna do is pull our float strips. And then I'll probably let that set up a little bit, maybe work on the curb, maybe start working on squaring all this stuff off. But yeah, the bulk of our mud is all done. We got, what, well, I think we did 14, 13 bags. 13 bags. 13 bags, so yeah. All right. Okay, so one of the reasons I like to have my strips close to the corner, especially the one on this wall, because I'm gonna take my edge and that's how I can clean my corners off. I just set the edge all the way against this strip and since it's a square, it's just gonna take off just the right amount of mud and leave me a really nice corner. So you don't wanna to take too much mud off at once, but just drag it, drag it lightly. Being able to straighten your walls, um, we also make sure that we get them square. So I'm gonna put, put the square right on the corner. And you can see I got a square wall here. And then over on this corner, we got a nice square wall. I want to make sure you can see that real good. But yeah, so that means when we got when we got a square wall, all the cuts that are on our shower pan are all going to be even. They're all going to be the same size. When you have plumb walls, you're not going to have cuts going from big to small. All the cuts are going to be the same size. And so you're just ending up with a lot better product when you float your walls. Okay, so when you pull your float strips, take your margin trowel. This is a margin trowel. Again, a tool pretty much ne necessary for every phase of tile setting from floating, grouting, setting. You're gonna use a margin trowel. Great tool to have. So I'm just taking it and I'm scoring the edge of my float strip. So you can see my, my floats starting to set up. It, it, turns like a dull color, it's not shiny anymore, so it's starting to set up, which means for me it's ready to take the float strips out. So I'm just scoring, I'm not going all the way through my float, I don't want to go all the way down to the wire, I'm just basically scoring the surface, because when I pull this strip, I'm going to want it to, to pull out and leave the mud behind, hopefully. Sometimes they'll stick, but... So I'm just gonna kinda wiggle, wiggle out. You can just wiggle it. And, and I like to kinda, once I get the top out, I'll try to wiggle and maybe put a little force going up. And that'll wanna just kinda let them pop out. So that's the way I want them to pop out. I don't want the mud behind it. For one, then you're gonna have to clean your float strip. For two, you're just gonna have to fill in more. I just wanted to take a little mud with it, not too bad. There we go. Yeah, came out pretty clean. This tile, if this was like a, a housing tract here in Sacramento and or the Bay Area or whatever, um, those guys are so fast. They would have this thing floated by lunchtime. They'd throw a fan on it and they, they would start setting their tile right on it. I mean, this is actually, I mean, if I wanted to, I could mix my thin set up loose and if I was using a light tile, like a bisque subway tile or something, I could go ahead and start setting on this right away. And that's actually a really good, strong bond because you're, you're mixing the mortars together while they're still wet. So yeah, but I always wait till the next day, especially when you're setting porcelain tile because it's so heavy. But when you're setting on a wet float, it's really nice because you know, it's just soft. It's like setting on a firm but soft bed where you, if you need to beat something in or if you need to, you're not scraping stuff. It's pretty cool, but. I got these strips and then with this guy, again, make sure, I'm making sure to give this a good score. And I probably want to go all the way through this guy, all the way to the wall. Don't want to scuff up the wall, even though it's just primed and not painted. So we just use drywall nails. We don't we don't want to be nailing into a stud, or you'll never get these guys out. And then our edge trim always covers our nail hole.
So again, that's going to give us a really nice clean edge. Let's see if I can get this guy out. So look how nice and clean that edge is. Okay, so one of the last things I do, I got my, my strips all pulled. And you can remember I put this mud up uh, right before lunch. And the reason why I like it to get firm so that it's just easier to work with. I can slice it so they aren't wiggling around anymore, but they're both five and three quarters. So I'm square off of the wall and I got the right, right width. I just take my edge and I slice down on it. And I'm not even hitting the edges yet. I'm just slicing the extra mud off. And then I'll just take a little more each time. Just fill them in. There. A lot of setters will do this actually the next day when they're when they right before they set their curb. Again, I just the OCD in me hates leaving parts of the float undone. I just want to walk in the next day. I want my float done. Just on how I do this. So I'm going to hop on this side and basically do the same thing. So I'm good with that. So yeah, we'll go ahead and we're going to uh, fill the float strips in, clean up the edges of my window and niche, and then we'll do the top of the curb last. So after I get the majority of my mud off, I like to use one of these little combination squares. There you go. If I drag off of here, I'm going to be cutting the top, this top ledge of my niche. It's going to be square. So the mud on the back, I mean, it's, it's firm. It won't push in, but I'm still being gentle with it because if I really wanted to dig in on it, I could. Keep an eye on my level. And since my mud's still a little soft, I can kind of indent my level into it a little bit so it's going to stay. So the bubble's right in the middle. You want to get that, Devin? So I got my, my bubble in the middle. Oops, sorry. And I'm just screening off the front edge of that level. another reason why I like to do uh, the wraps you know one of the first places I put mud you'll notice was on these wraps because it's a lot easier when the mud is set up to do this without it falling down I'll just do the other side same thing So now I'm plumb, I'm level, and that's a square. Which is awesome. And that's square. All square corners. Square, square. Square, square. The only place I don't have square is right here. And I'll probably put a little slope on the niche yeah, too. I kind of got an eyeball because I'm not going to make it square. I 
that's gonna hold in there nice. So I'm just gonna kind of shave off the front. And I don't like it. I hate having too much slope on my sills. Like I'll put a little slope on it, but I hate when the soap slides off of it. I, and it looks funny. It just, to me, it looks, you know, back in the 70s and 80s, they'd put a ton of slope on any, any curbs, any niches, any sills, which, you know, there's a, a purpose for that. But I mean, as long as it's not running back as long as it's level or slightly tilted this way it's going to function the same you need a ton of slope for water to want to run this way and to me it's just sacrificing too much you know you want to be able to put a bar of soap or you don't want to put a shampoo bottle on and have it tilt like that so i'm careful with my slope again i'll put a little on there but but not much you know quarter inch per foot so if i if i went a quarter inch per foot that's only going, if this is four inches, that's like an eighth of an inch at the most. You know, six inches would be an eighth. And so four inches is probably like, you know, in between an eighth and a sixteenth, which is like zero slope if you go on the quarter inch per foot. Any more than that, and it's going to be kind of funky. So I'll just double check. I got, so I'm level in the front, you can see. And zoom in, I'm level in the front, and then I'll just check the back level. You can see, put it on there, and it's good. So that's with my eyeball just kind of going off the back. You can adjust a little bit with thin set too if you need to, but that's a pretty good, pretty good sill there. Okay, so pretty much everything. My windows are nice and square. Okay, so when I float, fill in my float strips, I like to get my, my hawk and put a nice little even coat of mud on there. It makes it a lot easier for when I want to scoop. Um, so yeah, I just basically take a little bit of mud like that and fill it in like that. So after I get that up, you know, I won't do it now, but I just basically do that. And then I'll take my Darby trowel and work that all in. So that's about, I want to go a little bit more than that. Right there. So I'm just going to screed off. I'm not, I'm not worried about this side yet. I'm just kind of being careful not to, not to go too shallow on this side and not to dig in too much. I just basically want to form the edge on that side. Do that down the line. Again, when I'm screeding off stuff, I'm tr I'm not really pushing down. I'm more sawing and using using it as a guide. I can almost just hear where it's hitting the edge. I'm not really pushing down on it. Okay, bubble's still in the middle. I got a couple little fill-ins here.
Okay, so I got that side. I'm gonna come over to this side. And again, I want my slope. If I have any slope, I want it coming into the shower. You want, a, you want about a quarter inch per foot. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball that. I'll take a little bit off here. And now, so I have this, this point, I, I can't dig into that. So I'm being careful as I, as I screed off with my trowel that I'm not taking any more off. So I'll do a, a point like that, then I'll take my level and I'll just double check, make sure I got slope. You see the bubble there? So I got slope. Go ahead and go from the top, it'll be. So I got slope going into the shower. I like where that's at. So now I'm gonna use this as my screed point. So now I'm just gonna screed off. Again, being careful not to dig into my outside edge. And being careful not to push too hard down on this edge. That's that. I can take my four foot level, and put it right on the edge and look at that. No gaps underneath, perfectly straight, flat, plumb, square to the wall, square to this wall. I mean, I get stoked on doing this stuff. It's like, if you're into perfectionism, like this is like the ultimate reward. It's so cool. So I'll take this. Wait, can you grab me my Darby real quick, Devin? I'm just gonna rub this one down. Yeah, I'll take, and then I'll take my Darby. And I'm just gonna give it a final, you know, cause there might be a couple little ripples in there. Okay, so I'm just gonna basically start rubbing down the walls, doing the same thing. Just smoothing everything out. Any little imperfections I'm getting out. If I see a spot that needs some more mud, I can, I can fill it in, but thin set will fill in all of these voids anyways, but if you want, you can fill them all in.
Okay, so I got the wall all darbied down, everything smoothed out. Last little thing I do is I take my flat trowel and I like to just smooth it out so there's no grains of sand or ridges or anything. Uh, some guys don't do this step, but I like to have a nice smooth finish on my float when I come and set on it. Gives it a finish like glass. It's really nice. And it also, like I'll clean up all my corners. So that everything's perfectly square. You know, this is, you know, if you were doing curdy on this, you'd have like a big fat outside corner You'd have a band, you'd have another layer, you'd have all this buildup, you know? It's like when we float, there's none of that. We just take our thin set, spread it on the wall, and go. I mean, it's just, it makes setting so much nicer. I mean, this isn't even like work anymore. This is like fun. This is like, this is like creating art, man. It's, it's so cool. Okay, so we're we're all done here. We're we're all done, and I just want to show you guys again the the benefits of floating. So come on in here. I'm going to show you what it looks like um, with the square in place. So you can see I'm I'm perfectly square on the curb wall transition. All of my walls are perfectly square. And see. Our walls are square. Let's try this one. Perfectly square wall. My niche. Let's just double check my niche. Square there. Square right there. All of my walls. Perfect. 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 Okay, so we got that wall. Let's check out this wall. Flat, plum. Yeah. There we go. This wall's plum. So everything is, as you can see, this, this is ready for tile. Um, this probably took us, uh, I think we started floating around 10. And it's about five o'clock now, right, Devin? So, so check the video that's coming up right here. It's going to be more of the playlist of my mud stuff. So make sure you, you go to that video. And thanks again for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Hope you got something out of it. And I'll see you on the next one.